Today we're going to be checking out one of the most exciting advancements in digital night vision technology which is the ADNV G14 SE digital night vision monocular and we'll show off how its performance compares side by side with the PVS14 so you can see just how far digital night vision has come, how affordable it is, and how the performance is now pretty much on par with analog and ramping up to surpass it in the very near future. The G14 SE is really new so I'm really excited to have the opportunity to share it with you before anyone else does. But before we go any further, I do want to disclose that Goodnight Gear is my website and we are the first US retailer to offer ADNV's products, but I always strive to give you guys as fair of a review as possible on everything that we check out on the channel. And if you want to support the work that I do, you can use the discount code US10 to save 10% off if you do decide to pick up this device or any other digital night vision product from Goodnight Gear. Let's do a quick rundown on the G14 SE and the body is mostly a hard polymer and it's IP67 rated and it does have a very high quality feel that's similar to the Psyonix Opsin. On the front we've got the objective lens and you can rotate it to adjust the focus and inside there's a two-thirds inch second generation high performance CMOS solid state image sensor. Beneath that is the onboard IR illuminator which you can turn on and off. There's another small port here which will allow you to connect to the ADNV RS2 digital recording box which will allow you to record photo and video. The current configuration supports a 16340 battery but they also include an extended battery cap which will allow you to run a larger 18650 battery which will improve the runtime. On the side we've got a PVS14 style threaded hole for the mount and on the other side we've got the power and control knob and the eyepiece and inside we've got an 800 by 600 OLED display. The display is very close to the lens so the experience that you get is very immersive and when you're looking at the display you'll see the battery life and the frames per second on the top and then you can adjust the display brightness variably using the control knob. When you click it, you can turn on and off the IR light, adjust the luminance and the display brightness, swap between 150 frames per second, take photos and videos, adjust the contrast and also the sharpness. The UI isn't quite as robust as other digital devices like the Opsin or the MVG30, but it is simple to use and easy to operate and it gives you plenty of control over the core features. The out of the box mounting options are quite impressive and it comes with an ultralight aluminum alloy dovetail bridge so you can mount them over the right eye or the left eye and it comes with a few different mounting arms which will help you mount the monocular in different configurations and at the moment it's connected with an L4 mount which is attached to a fast compatible helmet. This is a flip up style mount so you can easily move them up and out of the way and it's very easy to get a comfortable viewing position and overall this is the nicest mounting hardware that I've seen included with the purchase of any night vision monocular. You can even bridge two of these together using the included mounting hardware and we'll dive deeper into this topic in another video. Now we're going to jump in and check out some testing footage from the G14 SE and the video was recorded using the ADNV RS2 recorder which is an add-on accessory that can be purchased separately. Being able to record directly on the device is a pretty cool feature that's standard with most digital night vision devices these days. The device is running at 100 frames per second and as you can see it's easy to pick up various IR aiming lasers and illuminators and you can see the reticle on an optic and it's very easy to rapidly acquire your target with both passive and active aiming using this setup. Most of the rest of the footage was filmed with a waxing gibbous moon with 55% illumination and no IR lighting was used. And we're going to be taking a look in a few different places, some of which have good moonlight and others that are very well shaded by the tree canopy. And we'll also be comparing it side by side with a PVS 14 as well. The quality of the image is incredibly crisp and the focal range is quite wide. So you're able to make out a lot of very sharp detail at different ranges without having to adjust the focus all that often. And in this shot, we got pretty lucky and we got some close up time with the deer and there was a little bit of ambient lighting spilling onto the scene but not enough for the deer to be visible with the naked eye and much of the background is impossible to see because almost no moonlight is penetrating the canopy. The G14 SE also seems to perform quite well in the presence of ambient lighting and you can clearly identify the light sources and there's a lot less glare compared to many other devices that I've looked at so there would definitely be some advantages to using these in the city or suburbs where you might find yourself transitioning between indoors and outdoors and mixed lighting and environments. The field of view on the G14 SE is 30 degrees high by 40 degrees wide, which does deliver a very immersive experience. And whether you're running at 100 frames per second or 50 frames per second, you're going to be able to navigate much more confidently with this device compared to others with more condensed fields of view and slower frame rates. Visibility is best when we look towards areas that are exposed to the moonlight, and there is a decent amount of moonlight reaching the road and some of the open areas 
but underneath and besides the trees, it is much darker and we're still able to make out those areas very clearly. One feature I was expecting and a little bit disappointed not to see included in the G14 SE is digital zoom. Digital zoom is very convenient and it allows you to see further compared to analog and most digital units do offer at least some level of digital magnification. For this shot, we've introduced a Gen 2 Plus white phosphor PVS-14 and the PVS-14 is being recorded through my Google Pixel 7 smartphone and this area is completely away from ambient lighting and much of it is shaded from the moonlight so the conditions are quite a bit darker and the only thing that was really visible here with the naked eye is the silhouette of the tree line on the sky and other than that everything is pretty much too dark to see. Low light no IR performance is definitely very similar between these two devices and there's really no noticeable advantage with regards to being able to see in darker areas between one device and the other. The field of view is pretty close between the two units but the slightly rectangular display does allow you to see a bit more in the corners compared to the circular view of the PVS-14. Analog does produce an image in real time but the lag on the G14 SE is really not noticeable so there's a very limited advantage to the PVS-14 in this department. So far I'm very impressed by how well the digital G14 SE is holding up against the analog PVS-14 but there are some other advantages to analog including better battery options and the ability to enhance with thermal overlays but we'll dive a little bit deeper into this comparison in a dedicated video. Overall the performance of the ADNV G14 SE is exceptional for a digital unit and at its current price point it's definitely a very impressive performer and a cheaper alternative to analog. The out of the box accessories are above and beyond and together this setup really allows you to do quite a lot. That just about wraps things up make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest in digital night vision as we're gearing up to check out a lot of awesome ADNV devices including the G14 P2 which has an even larger one inch sensor and also some of their digital night vision and thermal fusion units and you can also learn more about those on the good night gear website as always feel free to leave your questions and comments down below and I'll do my best to leave a response.